dumbass. They call me shithead. And Mr. Obama, sir, I don't necessarily recommend suicide to anyone, but you should go ahead and buy yourself some head on from your local pharmacy and a shotgun and shoot yourself. <laughs> Focus that in your hand. It's a straw. Give me the straw. No. Okay. <laughs> 
But I'm, I'm going to tell you exactly like it is. See, this this whole this whole Me Too movement thing from the very second that it was created has been nothing more than an absolute scheme, a scam to end all scams. It's it's essentially it doesn't exist, people. The Me Too movement is just yet another countless extension of the Democratic Party. I don't even know why I'm explaining this to you people when you already know that it got them all. Okay, 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 look, 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 okay, look, look. listen, listen. Listen, I think that's an adult. Okay, nah, 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 nah. okay. She acts like she is a 50 one year old woman. Fifty one year old woman and she sounds like a goddamn kid. About that night that bring me here today are the ones I will never forget. They have been seared into my memory and have haunted me episodically as an adult. But guess what? Those things never happened. They never happened. She's just trying to act like a little bitch. A kindergartner who doesn't know jack shit from an asshole. You see, see, do you know why Democrats are born? The same way that all human beings are born, except they're born to a pair of treasonists who don't even use logic of any kind to understand basic fucking facts. They can't even put two and two together to get four. They just want to assume by sticking one's nine into another six. I mean, you know? Okay. Okay. If there were a way, a legitimate way, legitimately speaking, a legitimate way, to accurately sum up how people are born. You know, the birds and the bees, right? You know, because, I mean, I mean, it's, it's not like you kids out there don't already know this. Of course, you, your parents probably showed you this unintentionally at one point or another. 
But they didn't tell you this in the way that I'm going to. And this this is probably going to Okay. I don't know if this is going to lead to my channels or whatnot getting terminated. Not that I have any channels. I have like like fourteen all over the internet. But you think you gotta gotta understand. Listen to me. Here's how you sum up the birds and the bees without saying it. Okay? Watch this. Watch this. Okay? Okay, watch. I mean, you know? Somebody help me, I'm going to die! That's how people are born into the world. I sure as shit, that's how I was. Oh. And you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not legitimately showing any private parts, obviously. Otherwise, this project would be canceled from the minute the board is ever finished or or processed or anything. I mean, you don't, you don't want to see me trust. Me. You don't. Nobody does. Because it's not reasonable. That, I mean, I mean, you think. Right? <laughs> oh, God. I, I can't, I can't even explain to you. Why am I ever living fuck? You know, I, I thought I was retarded. I thought I was dumb as hell. But then I realized that 69 and a half million animals, because they lost their right to be human a long time ago, voted for an illegal immigrant into the presidency. An illegal immigrant from Kenya into the present. Explain to me why, why in the hell would 69 and a half million people be retarded enough to buy into the full shit? Of a n from King. Explain that to me, please. Honestly, explain that. On second thought, don't, because it's not meant to be explained. The 2008 presidential election Wikipedia article explains it itself without actually saying anything. It's some text. So you don't have to say it out loud, you just have to read it. You, know, you just have to read it. You understand? Just read the goddamn thing. For real. By the way, that Kenyan man's presidency, because he was born in Kenya, so obviously that should have automatically disqualified him from running any office. Then you have to consider most of the people that voted for him were in his native Chicago, which actually wasn't his native. Kenya was his native. That African country, that shithole, that's where he was born, in the shithole in Kenya. But his so-called Chicagoans and all the people in California and all the people in New York voted for this guy. And that's why you're seeing precisely what you're seeing right now on Fox News, on CNN, on NBC News, all these other absolute 
dumpster fires of mainstream media that journalists call quote unquote news. Do you people understand it? Do you get it? You're being up the ass and you don't even know who's can you up the ass. Can't explain it any simpler than that. Okay, I just have, but you know. Let me make this as simple and crystal clear to you as a character off of Steven Universe. I can't believe I'm having to use that analogy once again. But you people can relate to that, so I have to. The point is, there is no constitution anymore. And it's our fault. It is all our fault. Because we, in 2008, elected the most unqualified president in the history of the world to ever become a president of any country an illegal immigrant, a jihadist, Muslim, Satanist, Luciferian, Antifa supporter, and creator and founder, mainly modern Antifa because that's the reason why we have all those rights. The reason why I say modern Antifa is because the original Anti-Defamation League wasn't politically motivated at all. And I want you to listen. Once again, I want you to listen to this piece of shit that he claims to be a Republican. He claims to be revoked. Listen to this piece of shit. Listen to this absolute retard. Listen, we're moving forward on the floor. I'll move it out of committee that I will only be comfortable moving on the floor until the FBI has done more investigation than they have already. Um, it may not take them a week. Uh, I understand that some of these witnesses may not want to discuss anything further. But I think we're we owe them due diligence. Bullshit! Bullshit! Can you believe Jeff Blake was ever a Republican in the first place? Why the hell did he become a Republican? If we all knew 30 years in advance, just like we knew now, that he was obviously a Democrat, pretending, pretending to be a Republican. Just like John McCain and what happened to him. His brain stopped working with him and he kills himself brain cancer, treatment, he stops it, therefore he commits suicide and is burning in hell right now and will continue to for the remainder of time as I am speaking to you. I want you to listen carefully. I want a 
look at these absolutely retarded jackasses who bear the unfortunate distinction of defending the original Third Reich. Or should we call this the Second Reich? Because you think, you think there was like, okay, no, it's not a Second Reich, is it? You see, the Third Reich from Nazi Germany was actually the Fourth. Thomas Jefferson founding democracy officially started the third. Except this one has lasted longer than anything that Satan has ever created put together. Except for capitalist system. Except for the Vatican. Except for the Jesuits. They're the original right. The first right. The second right, of course... Second Reich. The Second Reich was the Rothschild dynasty and Adam Weishaupt's Bavarian Illuminati. The Third Reich was Thomas Jefferson betraying every human being in history by founding what is now the Democratic Party in 1790. Fourteen years after he signed into law a declaration to become a constitutional republic, now known as the United States of Satanism. Because it's not America anymore, it's Satanism. It stopped being America fourteen years after it became America, or modern America, when he did what he did in 1790, 14 years after he signed a 1776 declaration that essentially founded what is modern America. Or as I've said, the United States of Satanism. Okay. We're going to brave through this together. Every single one of us. Get ready to be shocked. Get ready to be shocked, people. Get ready for it. It's coming. Do you want to learn to draw and create amazing oh, artwork course, that will be Because advertising, I don't need to go to right school to learn to draw! Demonstrators gathered outside Freedom Hall to protest the President Donald John Trump Sr.'s arrival Johnson City on Monday. These are the same retarded pigs. Shit fucks. The absolute retarded morons. Same people. The same 69 and a half million, holy fuck! That many people voted for a nigger from Kenya who illegally immigrated here to become the most illegitimate president of any country in history? Those people, yeah, they are really that stupid. They are really that stupid. By the way, the difference between a nigger and a black man about as simple as distinguishing a Democrat from a Republican or a Christian from a Satanist. A nigger votes Democrat no matter how bad the candidate is. A 
black man votes Republican. Because Republicans are the same people who have been trying to pass an amendment for 26 years to get rid of this shithole known as democracy. And by the way, Thomas Jefferson started. He was the one that started the whole thing. Yeah, that Thomas Jefferson. I'll be recording a video on Thomas Jefferson sometime this month. Meanwhile, Hollywood's infamous pedophilia in a shockumentary I call Hollywood Shithole Land of Pedophiles. I'm going to make that readily available on my YouTube channel and all my social media accounts, or as many as I possibly can or desire. December 11, 2018. The third in my shockumentary series, and hopefully one of many more to come. I'm not asking you for money. I don't monetize my videos. Because if you monetize your videos, you have to succumb to democracy. And the first time you get out of line, what happens? They shut down your channel. Good luck with that. Monetizers. Good luck with that. Because you're absolutely going to win. It's idiotic. If you were one of those 63 million people who were fortunate enough to vote Donald John Trump into the presidency, then guess what that means? It's time now for our voice up of the day. Speaking of which, hey, Charles, you remember when Tiffany got your hand? I got his head. Oh, oh, Charles, Charles! Oh, no one passes us. Fuck! Hi, everybody. It's your boy Scully here, and I have a series of translations for you. All right. Jack Dorsey's thread on what his vision of Twitter is. I've translated it. Okay? So, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read out its tweets, and I'm going to translate its tweets in a way that you people might understand. Jack Dorsey, first part of his thread. We are committing Twitter to help increase the collective help, openness, and civility of public conversation, and to hold ourselves publicly accountable towards progress. I may be a retarded idiot savant, but the fact at day's end is as simple as simple can be. Translation I, Jack Dorsey, and everyone who works for me at Twitter are a coward, treason lovers, we're fools, jackasses, mindless men who would rather listen to his lower head than his upper one. 
and we're a complete waste of God's time all at once because we shadow ban people for absolutely zero reason whatsoever. Okay, part two of his threat. Why? We love instant public global messaging and conversation. It's what Twitter is, and it's why we're here, but we didn't fully predict or understand the real-world negative consequences. We acknowledge that now, and are determined to find holistic and fair solutions. Translation We love silencing conservatives, and we love Islamic cop-grabbers who defy the Constitution and work tirelessly to overthrow it. Bottom line, Mr. Dorsey is a liar. And you people had better start seeing that real quick in a very short period of time. Third part of his threat. If you want to improve something, you have to be able to measure it. The human body has a number of indicators of overall health, some very simple, like internal temperature. We know how to measure it, and we know some methods to bring it back in balance. Translation If you want to improve something, you have to be able to rig it. The human body has a number of indicators of overall health, some very simple, like calling bullshit. We know how to measure it, but we will never choose to, because we're retards, and we don't give a shit what the facts are, because we're going to distort them in every which way imaginable. Needless to say, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey admits guilt. Part 4 of his threat. Our friends at Cortico and Social Machines introduced us to the concept of measuring conservative health and cons um, actually conversational health. Why did I say conservative like a retard? They came up with four indicators. Shared attention, shared reality, variety of opinion, and receptivity. Read about their work here at their cortical blog. Translation. Our friends at DNC, FBI, CIA, DOJ, the Clinton Foundation, and Al-Qaeda introduced us to the concept of lying. They came up with four indicators. Suck Muslim dick, suck donkey peen, suck illegal immigrant dick, and suck our own dicks. Don't badger us. In other words, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey is guilty. Fifth part of his threat. We don't know yet if these are the right indicators of conversational health for Twitter. And we don't yet know how best to measure them. Or the best ways to help people increase individual, community, and ultimately global public health. Translation We know these are the wrong indicators of how to run a social media site and we'll never admit it because we hate America and all of the people in it. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey is a loser, everyone. He hides his true feelings as always because he is a donkey-brained, beat-off commie. Part 6 of his threat. What we know is we must commit to a rigorous and independently valid set of metrics to measure the health of public opinion on Twitter. And we must commit to sharing our results publicly to benefit all who serve the public conversation. Translation 
What we won't know is we must commit to turning ourselves into the police for our countless efforts to overthrow your beloved constitution. And we must commit ourselves to a sanitarium because our brains are full of Bengay and mashed horse dung. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey in Milt's Guilt. Sight unseen, sound unheard. Part 7 of his thread. We simply can't and don't want to do this alone. So we're seeking help by opening up an RFP process, meaning rigging fucking people, to test the why it is not possible for great ideas and implementations. This will take time, and we're committed to providing all the necessary resources. Translation. We simply won't do this alone. So we want you to be our pawns in our chess game so we can make you all peasants who deserve nothing but a bag of gold for Satanness. Because saying Christmas is illegal now. <laughs> this has taken three years and we're committed to shadow banning you. So, Twitter CEO, Mr. Jack Dorsey, who, by the way, his middle name is also shared with a certain starfish on a popular kids' TV show on Nickelodeon. You want to give up yet, Jack Dorsey? Tough shit. You're too deep in it now. Part 8 of the thread. I think it's either part 7 or part 8. I've lost count by this part. But anyway, next to the last part of his thread. We're going to get a lot of feedback on this thread and these ideas. And we intend to work best to learn from and share the ongoing conversations. Vijaya, Mr. Donut, and I will do a Periscope next week to share more details and answer questions. Translation. We're going to get a lot of hate on this thread that we pulled out of our asses, and we intend to not work to spite ourselves and share our hatred of America. Vijaya, Mr. Donut, and I, Jack Dorsey, will do a threesome next week to screw you all over. Jack Dorsey, Twitter CEO, is guilty. Last part of his threat. Thanks for taking the time to read and consider. And also, come help us. <laughs> Translation. Thank you for taking the time to read and consider. And also, come all over us. Because we check off to Barry Soltoro and we jack off to Bill and Hillary and Chelsea Clinton, and we jack off to Soros, and we jack off to Rob Schild and Rockefeller and Warburg and the rest of the pathetic community of 300, because that's all we do here at Twitter. So, there you have it. Twitter CEO and corporate dick sucker Jack Patrick Starr Dorsey is colluding with his butt buddy Mark Zuckerberg to impeach our Constitution. Why? Because you people let it happen! That's why. 
So everybody, I have one very simple question that has a very simple answer. Whether that's rhetorical or not, it's not up to me, because my opinion doesn't mean a damn thing. But anyway, I have a question for all of you. Would you like to boycott Twitter? The answer is very clear. It's an obvious, hell yeah! <laughs> but you guys get it, so I don't have to explain it to you. You just know, right? Okay, I'm done with this little rant. Now it's time for everybody's real rich little nerdy fake noise thing. What the f- Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Shane McMahon enters the finals to replace The Miz allegedly in Crown Jewel and becomes the best in the world. Now this this YouTube this this Wikipedia entry is just so freaking funny. I I swear to God. <laughs> Oh! Born Shane, best in the world, McMahon. January the 15th, 1970, age 48. The worm of the best mother in the world! Residence, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Here comes the money! Occupation, businessman, the best professional wrestler in the world. He was active, 1998 through present. Net worth, 69 billion. How the hell is that? <laughs> In your fucking dreams, he is. Title, founder and vice chairman of Seven Stars Cloud Group Incorporated. Spouse, Marissa Mazzola. Children, three. Oh my God. I, uh... <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Look at the Look at the fucking shit down there. Look. Trained by Tom Pritchard, Al Snow, Bill Nurse, Sergeant Slaughter, and Jesus Christ. Oh my god. <laughs> And this guy calls himself the best in the world? Oh my god, I, I cannot even fucking... Oh... This has got to be some extra level freaking cringe. Oh... I, I swear to god, I, I cannot even describe to you... And by the way, this is not sponsored by Shane Alak himself. But I just, I really don't understand why in the hell, it's just, why did they book Shane into the fucking match to start with? Why couldn't they have let Miz finish the match and not have an injury angle involving him? Why? Was he too much of a chicken shit to win that title the best in the world? Because Ms. Mizanin, you know, Mike Mizanin deserved it better than Shane O'Mac, I'll tell you that. The only reason why he came back to the company was because his father lurched him back into here and used him as a pawn in another scheme to completely kill professional wrestling, which is what WWE has done since 1982. I cannot stress this enough, people. I watched bits and pieces of last night's Raw as of this recording, and I'm telling you what, this is by far, that episode of Monday Night Raw that I saw last night was by far the worst fucking episode of Raw I have ever seen. Possibly the worst 
three hours of television in the history of humanity. What the fuck was that? Seriously. What? What the fuck? No, seriously though, what was that? Honest to God, I want to know. Three hours later. And by the way, I'm being completely legitimate. My second Twitter account got suspended permanently. Why? Because I consistently call Jack Dorsey out on his bullshit. Now, here's what gets me. Here, here's, here's what really gets the crap out of me, okay? I translate his entire thread of Twitter posts that he himself made lying he lied essentially to all of his people i called him out on it by translating the nine twitter posts of the thread that summed up basically his state of the union or his state of twitter or whatever the hell and i translated every single one of those tweets that he posted regarding what Twitter has become and what he's allowed it to become. Apparently, he took offense to that because he doesn't accept any truths known to man because he doesn't know what the truth is anymore because his mind is full of shit. So he suspends me. So this is the appeal letter that I wrote on Twitter's appeal suspension page. Mr. Dorsey, you don't get it, do you? I have exposed, am exposing as we speak, and will continue to expose the truth for exactly what it is. And yet, even with all this crushing evidence hanging over your head like the dark cloud it is, you won't accept the truth for exactly what it is. And because of that sheer willingness to put all of your eggs in the Hillary Clinton-laced, Barack Obama-faced Easter basket, your social media plantation is going out of business. I win, Jack Patrick Star Dorsey. You lose. Good luck getting out of this one. Because like it or not, you won't. And with that, I'll see you in the Supreme Court to file charges against you for violating the Constitution and the First Amendment privileges of myself and about 63 million other people in just these United States alone. So, have fun with your Hitler parade while you're still able to pack trick star Jack Dorsey. It's not going to last much longer. After all, you are the one who, alongside your buck buddies Mark Zuckerberg, Noah Glass, Evan Williams, and Ben Stone, Sold your soul to Lucifer for nothing on the dollar, aren't you? Anyway, I will say nothing further than a conclusion to the impending case of the United States of America versus Twitter. Thank you for reading this message, and have a splendid rest of your day. Goodbye. Yours immortally, the man who will expose your shadow banning hopes for what it is, the man who you assume to be a robot but never is, was, or will be, and the man who will be responsible for your justified and total downfall, yours truly, Kevin the Skull Anderson. See, here's the thing. They want you to focus in SoCal where there's a club shooting so you don't see the voter fraud here in Broward County. What part of rigged election system do you not understand? <laughs> and, and meanwhile, you're listening to Lady Gaga. You know? Man, piss off. You guys are just freaking 
if you guys don't see the voter fraud going on in Broward County, you truly are deserving of everything that the Democrats are going to do to you. Because I'm not going to do it to you, but they are. And it's going to be perfectly justified because you stupid jackasses voted for these retarded idiots. Time now for our cringe moment of the day! <laughs> well, fuck my day! How about... No. <laughs> Oh my god. This in from Facebook's The Conservative Jew. My god, man. How accurate is this? <laughs> Would you realize most adults in the world still read this symbol? The tic tac toe sign as pound and you named your women's movement against sexual harassment pound me too <laughs> oh my god man oh Holy shite! Can, can just just look at look at that. Oh my god! <laughs> oh man! Damn! I I got a nice laugh out of that. Let me tell you. <laughs> I can't believe I'm having to explain this to you people, but warning alert, okay? Spoiler alert and warning. The accurate, albeit grotesque, summary of the entire presidencies of Carter, Bush's 43 and 41, and Obama combined, incoming. Spoiler alert, most Definitely on the horizon, as will be seen plain as day for anyone to allow themselves to fully fathom. No. I don't need to tell you this, but you already know, so let's get started. Before I show you this picture, by the way, I, I should let you know this is definitely. NSFW, without question. But it's also a very hilarious, mind you, a very accurate reminder of the jackasses in the demon rap party that we elected to serve us, or rather, to disserve us. Notice how I use that, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, fuck it. The point I'm trying to make is, this video sums up the entirety of democracy post-1812 in a nutshell. This was a photograph taken by Korean pop star Psy. You know, the guy who came up with, Opa Gangnam Style! Op! Op! You know, that guy. He posted a picture of a South Korean monument that is so grotesquely accurate that I cannot do anything to put to words how accurate and historically correct this really is. Because this, is this is like half of America in a nutshell who voted for Obama and McCain. They voted for... They voted for Nixon! Yeah! They voted for Hillary Clinton! Yeah! But it didn't get them anywhere, did it? Okay. Now this is the picture in question. Oh my god, what the fuck is that? Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, I am very sorry that you had to hear that. I'm sorry. 
not even the tiniest little bit. If you were one of those 63 million people who were fortunate enough to vote Donald John Trump into the presidency, then guess what that means? Jesus Christ. So we got another Muslim terrorist in the White House. Great. Stop it. 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 No! The bowling program that you're about to see is based on actual real life events that may prove too damning for politically correct audiences. If you're going to be offended by any of what you'll see shortly, then what the hell are you doing on my channel? Nonetheless, the following is purely for educational, informational, and comedic purposes only. In other words, don't be a stupid shillery, okay? Be a trumpeter. <laughs> Time for art. Of the week. <laughs> I don't I don't mean to include this on the dick of the week segment here but this absolutely deserves mentioning and and look look I don't guys listen to me I don't mean to nitpick with you guys over at EA Sports or Electronic Arts or whatever you call it but um that is inexcusable okay you had one vowel in that four-letter word, and you didn't use it. Instead, you replaced it with something that looks like an A, but it's actually an O. See, okay, okay, let me, let me, let me explain this to you, okay? Guys, listen, look at this. Tell me what you think is wrong with this when I, when I read this out. Winter berries! Bless Mizzlestone to get worm... And comfortable. I mean, I, I get that the person who wrote that tagline below the headline is probably, like me, mentally challenged. Probably a bit more on the retarded category or intellectually disabled or whatever you call it anymore. Because, see, I don't... I don't care much for the term intellectually disabled because that doesn't cut it. Back in the days of pre-PC world, of pre-political correctness, they called it exactly what it was, mental retardation. I know, because I lived in a group home once. Now, here's... Now, I, I want to... <laughs> okay... <laughs> I want to I want to point this out to you guys. <laughs> All right. Winter berries. Bless Mistlestone to get warm and comfortable. I mean, were they were they trying to pull my leg here when they did that, or or I mean, <sighs> obviously this has to be a practical joke because because the guy who wrote the tagline below the title obviously knew what he was doing when he did this he he wanted to let's just say he wanted to be a comedian 
and confuse the word warm, which is used to describe something that heats up or gets hotter, with a Scotty Too Hotty finisher called the worm. The worm. As in Scotty Too Hotty jumping up and down, doing his thing like a worm, and, and doing it on his finisher on one of his opponents in front of about 20,000 people in an arena. So, but, but like I said, I don't, I don't mean to nitpick. I just wanted to point that out. By the way, I fixed it for you. You're welcome. Of the week. Don't act like a bitch. Guy builds a utopia for mice. It all goes to hell. Here's a video of a guy farting for about 45 seconds. This is the family that will be responsible for killing millions of more people over the next 10 years. These are the Sacklers. And as their name implies, they are miserable sacks of dog shit. This family, allegedly consisting of an intramural burial of billionaires and literal sacks of shit, hence what their name implies, started the opioid epidemic way back in the mid to late 90s. And it all started with this man named Dr. Robert Sackler. This man developed the same thing that would lead to hundreds of thousands of people dying of overdoses on it, and I'm talking about Oxycontin. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. But, but, but these people seem so innocent. They look so happy. Yeah, but behind their smiles, behind their smiles lies an unfathomable amount of evil in just one of them alone. The five of them put together are the reason that Big Pharma is the enemy of the people. And they're probably responsible for influencing Pfizer. They influenced Pfizer to develop another product, and I'm just speculating here, called Zoloft. The same Zoloft that has been linked to so many people having these unnatural reactions that had they been on any other medicine but Zoloft and Oxycontin would never have happened because the medicine that they would take in unlike Zoloft and Oxycontin are unmistakably 
without a doubt effective in preventing their bodies from reacting in such a way that they act unnaturally. People, the Sacklers are useless, miserable, terrible, despotic pieces of shit. They are sacks of dog shit, and I'm not going to say that they deserve to die, but Dr. Robert Sackler died of old age in 2017, and thank God that he's burning in hell now. Let's see if we can do that with the rest of the family, huh? I mean, you know, you know just for shits and giggles. Not that it's going to matter or anything, not that it means anything, but if we could get his family arrested, tried, and convicted of killing hundreds of thousands of people since 1996, that would be great. That would be absolutely fucking great. Because I'm telling you right now, if there were ever a candidate or a group of thereafter responsible for a death sentence, the Sacklers would be right up there at the top of the list, along with the Clintons and the Obamas and every single Democrat in Congress and all over this country. Because not a single one of them are worth any freaking thing. They are not worth a dime. They're not worth two cents in a country that has been reduced to shit when they killed it. Let me make that perfectly clear. Let me make that absolutely clear to you. Understand? Okay, next subject. This comes from the Good News Network. Goodnewsnetwork.org, I believe. So, while everyone in Congress, minus the President and Vice President, of course, because they're the most mature of the bunch of them. There is a kid, a 12-year-old kid, Liam Hannon, the founder, the owner, and operator, and CEO, and chairman of his own company. His own. He's 12 years old, and he already owns his own lunch delivering company. Liam's Lunches of Love. We'll just call that law for short. Not, not that I have to go there, but fuck it. He's delivered over 2,000 free lunches. They're all free. He's delivered 2,000 free lunches to his homeless Cambridge community in Massachusetts. Guess what he told his local reporters? He told them... And, and this is, this is, this is really, really, this is what really gets me. In a time where there seems to be so much negativity, sometimes you have to turn to a 12-year-old to lead the way. Now, is that not a benevolent, kind-hearted kid, if ever you saw one. Because if it's not, you probably need to check into a psych ward or dig yourself six feet under the ground and bury yourself alive. Because that, that's a great kid. People, I cannot in any way stress this enough. When a 12-year-old is more mature than the entire mainstream media and the entire government and the entire deep state combined, you know there is a serious fucking problem. By the way, they will never cover it. They will never cover it. And you know why they won't cover it? <clears throat> Watch that. Sackler, <coughs> Clinton, <coughs> FBI, <coughs> Russia. 
You understand? They will never cover this simply because they won't allow themselves to. Now, I don't, I don't understand this, man. There are 12 year old kids who are delivering free lunches to their homeless communities, starting up their own businesses and bringing positivity to a world that is 100% negative. And meanwhile, the MSN's going, All the Democrats go, They're just screaming, Trump, 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 Russia, Russia, Russia. Shut the fuck up. You know? If you acted more like this guy and acted a lot like yourselves, we wouldn't be having this fucking problem, right? My God, man. And I know my voice just cracked. Don't at me. Because this kid is a grade A freaking genius. This is a genius. I can't even stress it enough. Ah. Oh. When a 12-year-old kid is smarter than the entire government put together and all of its enterprises and all of its extensions, you know your country's in deep freaking shite. And it's dung as fuck that a 12-year-old kid has to be smarter than every single person in Congress put together minus the president and his cabinet and his vice president. Because Trump and Pence and his cabinet are the best cabinet that any human being could afford. And God bless the Trumps. God bless the Pences. Because without 12-year-olds like Liam Hannon, we wouldn't even exist right now. We'd all have killed ourselves a long time ago. Luckily, there are people like him that exist. By the way, the media will never cover this. <laughs>
<laughs> a jackass, a forever first tranny, a buff, and Hitler's dog. <laughs> what the? <laughs> uh, Oh my god, man, this, this is just crazy. And I came up with this on the fly. And this is just the second one. We haven't even gotten to the last one yet. Oh my god, this is completely insane. Oh, I'm about to have a freaking heart attack in a minute. Okay. So, so, we, we got something here. You know, Rich, Rich Wilson said to me after I posted him my versions of this that I'm having way too much fun with this, and then he had a laughing emoji. <laughs> An illegal immigrant, a soy boy named Mike Robinson, a wannabe porn star, <laughs> and that's your prop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I can't shit anymore, man. What is this? Oh. I swear to god, if that's not a Thomas Jefferson moment, I don't know what the hell is. Or maybe it's an Andrew Jackson moment, I don't know. Richard Nixon moment, maybe? Andrew Johnson maybe? I don't know. Make what the hell you want of it. I don't care anymore. Just, just... Okay, we'll just... God, man, I, I, I'm I, still trying to process this. This is... This is... Cr don't act like a bitch. <laughs> Okay, let me let me just tell you something, all right? All right, hear me out. Hear me out. If you're going to vote for a Democrat, what you need to do is look yourself in the mirror, realize the error of your ways, and say to yourself, Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay? It's not that hard. A fucking dog can do that. Please. For the love of fuck. Vote Republican in 2020 next year. Or either three things. One. Stay at home and masturbate to Kamala Harris and Bill Clinton. Two. Go get some professional freaking help to solve your Trump derangement syndrome. Or three, do us all a favor and just shut the up. Or you could just bypass those three options and just. Bail out! Bail out! Bail out! Bail out! You know? This is Kevin the Skull Anderson. Have a good one. Stop it. 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 How about... No. And now a preview of the upcoming documentary from Skull Media Enterprises entitled Jefferson's Mistake, other than to fill time, of course, because this episode was a little fucking short. Have fun with that.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest shockumentary. And this one, believe it or not, is the most shocking one of all so far. Now, I say so far because there are going to be others that are more shocking than this one. Okay. So, you people under, do you people have any idea, do you understand the image that you are being showed right now? The very image that you are being shown right now. Friday, June the 18th, the year 1812, the same year of which inspired a man named Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky to write his infamous overture that centered around the war that happened between that year and 1815. Meanwhile, the guy who started that war was not a person from Russia, was not a person from France. Guess who started the War of 1812? Your eyes are not deceiving you, ladies and gentlemen. The person who started the War of 1812 is, of course, former President Andrew Jackson. The man who killed Thomas Jefferson's creation that would have saw the country soar to heights unparalleled even by the standards of Alexander the Great some centuries before. But because of what Andrew Jackson did on that fateful day, Friday, June the 18th, 1812, when he let the Brits burn down the White House, when he knew it was balderdash, he let the Brits in anyway. And meanwhile, meanwhile, he could have instead, he could have just let a hundred thousand of his own American troops come in to war the Brits off. Because there really weren't that many of them compared to the people that were in this country that were in the military at that time. Hundreds of thousands of them. But Andrew Jackson went against James Madison's order to bring the troops to the capital, Washington, D.C. And instead of bringing them there to war the Brits off, he let them say, ah, you can do whatever you want. I don't need you. That's how the first White House was burned down that led to the one that we see today. The first one, of course, we will never see, and I will tell you why. It is so simple, it has been proven time and again in many different ways. Prior prophets like Myron C. Fagan, a playwright, like Nostradamus, a seer, like Einstein, and, and so many other people before or since them, have warned us about this, they have tried to help us avoid this, but we wouldn't listen to them. And because of that, this great nation that could have been far greater has officially now become twenty-first century Nazi Germany. Yes, that's right. It's a twenty-first century modern-day Nazi Germany, except it's not World War II anymore, and 1945 and Adolf Hitler died 75 or so years ago. But the person pulling the strings in America are the entire Democratic Party, which are fully and almost entirely inspired by a man who also happened to be the very right-hand stooge, the child stooge of the man that was Adolf Hitler. I'm talking about George Soros. And, and by the way, you wonder why everything's going to hell. Do you, do you know why everything's going to pieces in a handbasket? Well, guess what? Now you know why. And I'm going to talk to you guys about it for the next two hours. And you people are going to see, personally, the very reasons as to why humanity is going 
to hell in a handbasket, and I don't mean metaphorically or literally, I mean that from a historical standpoint, because it's become as if Christ given his life up for us on a cross on Calvary, on a crucifix somewhere, around 2,000 years ago, meant absolutely nothing. You would think, right? The world's greatest nation, the United States of America, we the people, the same nation that stupidly and retardedly elected an illegal immigrant whose parents smuggled him here from Kenya, which is not a part of the United States, by the way, although it may be in any other dimension aside from this one. They elected a man named Barack Hussein Obama II, actual real identity, Barry Sotoro, to lead them to the slaughter, and boy, did he deliver on that. Holy Jesus. The same man that killed our nation was also the same man who killed our nation a hundred and ninety years later, just in a different form. Who ever said that the spirit of Andrew Jackson didn't live in virtually every single Democrat in D.C., in New York, in California, in the hate groups that have fueled the Democratic Party and entirely funded them, including ISIS, Antifa, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, some of the members of the Republican Party that actually turned out to be Democrats disguised as Republicans, and dare I say it, the World Health Organization, who, as you know, was founded by one George Soros and is being run alongside his son, Alexander Soros, who is of the bloodline of Hitler. You people know damn well that I am not making this up, because it is the God's honest truth, and it is because I'm not the only person to say this. I'm not the first to say this. Will I be the last? Of course not. I won't even be close to being the last. As a matter of fact, millions of you probably right now are saying the exact same things that I'm saying to you just in less politically incorrect ways. To meet a social justice warrior standard! Let's go for the social justice warriors! Since when has that helped? Absolutely never. It has helped no one at any time ever. Nobody has benefited from social justice Nobody will ever benefit from social justice and its so-called warriors, which are actually Rothschild-appointed chess pawns in the Luciferian Interdimensional Summit that is the Committee of 300. And yes, I did just quote a song from a famous Norwegian black metal band. And they're actually a lot more cinematic than another Norwegian black metal band neither of which I'm going to name because you know who they are. Obviously. Now, on to the main topic of our evening. Why don't we now get to the reasons as to why democracy died on that fateful day sometime in the morning or afternoon of that day in 1812 and has been dying a billion deaths for the better half of 210 years. Let's get started. Okay? Because believe me, you people aren't going to want to miss this. Guarantee you this isn't going to get any more than 50 views on my channel, but it's going to open some eyes. A whole lot of eyes. A great deal of eyes! And you, my fellow YouTubers, my fellow YouTube subbers, the very people who helped you guys become what we are, you're going to be the first to hear it. Because we here at Skull Media Enterprises don't just talk about ourselves, we talk about the people we're supposed to help, namely 
yourself. We try to reach out to you. Name, of course, that's not to be confused with a show called Reaching Out to the Unfamous, which is a web show that I produce on my channel, by the way. By the way, I'm, I'm the one man behind Skull Mini Enterprises because I have the balls and the nuts and the stones to speak the God's honest truth. When no one else will speak it exactly as it's meant to be spoken, who is the one man who for the last five and a half years stood up to the plate and told the God's honest truth for what it is? You guessed it, Kevin the Skull Anderson. Yours truly, me. And I will continue telling these troops until I am dead. Let's get started. No! It's just not easy. Jesus Christ, the United Nations, was created to become the housing for the Illuminati Great Conspiracy. <clears throat> Look at me! If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. program that you're about to see is based on actual real-life events that may prove too damning for politically correct audiences. If you're going to be offended by any of what you'll see shortly, then what the hell are you doing on my channel? Nonetheless, the following is purely for educational, informational, and comedic purposes only. In other words, don't be a stupid shillery, okay? Be a trumpeter. <laughs> Three hours later. Shut the Dumber and dumber and dumber every single day. The federal court has demanded that a World War II monument, or actually no, a World War I monument, be taken down. A World War I monument. The Great War before the greatest war that would happen two decades after ladies and gentlemen this is what happens when you elect a bunch of terrorists to assume office in Washington District of Columbia we had 207 years to somehow learn from the mistake we made when we voted a genocidal maniac to the presidency. But did we learn? Did we listen? Hell no, we didn't. Of course not. And that's why I say that America is without question the dumbest, most misinformed, and most corrupted nation of the nearly 215 across seven continents, or continents, I should say, that make up this, our beloved Mother Earth. If we amend the Constitution to get rid of this absolute farce that is Jacksonianism, and restore the integrity that once was when Thomas Jefferson took good care of this nation in the early 19th century, then we might 
and a very big one at that. Be able to get rid of the scum lords and criminals that now run our nation and have been for decades. Meanwhile, and this is important, and you guys better listen to this. Meanwhile, Trump is the furthest thing from a politician that logic can concede. And he became POTUS two years ago in his very first run for office. Actually, hell, by this point, it's more like two and a half years ago. Why was Trump elected in November of 2016? Because there were some 63 million of us that agreed that having a marionette on a string for POTUS was never going to work, would never work, and wasn't working anyway. And was about as useful as an elevator in an outhouse. Ever since that night, the entire mainstream media, all of Hollywood, the entire deep state, the entirety of academia and its so-called education system, which it's not, by the way, it's the furthest thing from that, that is now reduced to shreds by Rothschild and the dynasty thanks to treasonous offenses made by Jackson, Grant, Cleveland, Wilson, FDR, Bush's father and son, and the illegal immigrant scumfuck known as Barry Satoro, pseudonym Barack Obama. In other words, the entirety of the unconstitutional brigade that has been killing the foundation of a nation founded by the American Indians thousands of years before, prior to being rebranded by a bunch of colonists who always, almost always never got along, but agreed on certain things needing to be done, has done nothing but everything possible to completely erase the history of the indigenous and that of the colonists who made America into what it is, destroying, in every sense, America's last remaining foundations for as long as the Civil War was long rumored to have ended in 1865. Speaking of which, the Civil War never really ended. It's been going on for nearly 16 decades, and we're all, for better or worse, blind to it in some form or fashion. People, my fellow Americans, my fellow friends, indigenous and immigrants alike, and I'm talking about the legal kind. I'm not talking about the illegal kind that invade here to steal our crap from us. There's no other way to say it, alright? America is not dying. It's just dead. And it has been dead for over two centuries. There is absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing that any one of us can do to save it individually, meaning on our own. However, should we choose for once to get our heads right out of our anuses long enough to see the very problem that stands in front of us, we can become the solution to this insoluble problem by going to the polls next year under one united front as a collective whole, as a group. Not as individuals, but as a collective group. 
and voting out unanimously every single treasonous senator and hopeless falsehood giving pretender that is just as spons is just as responsible I can't fucking speak straight that is just as responsible for the death of this nation as we ourselves are we must band together as our life depends on it and if anyone else tells you differently that someone is very clearly very obviously lying to you and you know it and you have to let that on and realize the solution destroy and obliterate completely the virus of the jacksonian deceived galvanize and bring back to life from its 207 year old slumber the long aborted and ignored antidote of Jeffersonian justice and boycott all things mainstream media except for your local news because God knows that the local news is the only news that you can trust but that will slowly go away very very soon so at some point you're gonna have to abandon that as well completely so that way we can rest easier at night knowing that we have done what was truly right heed the warning of George Washington's 1796 farewell address this will be our last vestige for a constitutional restoration and your heeding of this warning will save yourselves your families your pets and the whole of humanity and all life on earth from a perfectly avoidable mass suicide everything George Washington the original George W in 1796 said is coming absolutely true today in fact it is merely prophecy now that I look back on it everything George Washington said in 1796 was prophecy biblical level prophecy you cannot write this you cannot script this for any tv show or any movie it writes itself it explains itself and it shows itself to you the people which is why we are the fourth branch of government that nobody ever talks about so if you want to have a planet to call home in a generation or two you had better get off of your asses go out and make it happen no excuses whatsoever there will most likely never be another second chance after this one and there will be no more second chances to come after this one if we don't take full advantage of it we have one last chance do your part make it happen and save this planet from a death by humanity please for the love of god make it happen Now we move on to something else. Pingers of the week. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Venezuela 
is wanting to wage war against the U.S. What? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I swear to Christ, man. <laughs> if the <laughs> I swear to God, this is a this has to be a joke. This is gonna be a fucking joke, man. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, Venezuela is warning the U.S. that they will fight against America. <laughs> Little tiny Venezuela that turned their country into shite when they elected some guy named Robert Maduro. <laughs> I swear to <laughs> My God, can you could you possibly write a better script than that? I mean, the story practically writes itself. America wins. America wins. Oh my God. Hey, I'm going to because that country has been removed to shed because the vote of prevents a broken reason I made again. Yeah, I'm in the back of America. <laughs> no. No. Absolutely no. The answer is no. The answer is no. The answer is no. Venezuela has been reducing itself to shit since the late 1940s, since after World War II, which is still going on, by the way, it never ended! And yet they want to wage war on us? They, Venezuela, wants to wage war on us? Because their country is full of crap? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a clean up on Isle Venezuela. Ladies and gentlemen, clean up on Isle Venezuela. Oh. <laughs> you know? Might as well just. <laughs> you know? Fucking hell. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally, I don't know what to fucking say, this is so funny to me, man. Why? Just why are you waging war on us, Venezuela? You fucked your own government us, now you wanna fuck our government too? You fucked your own government up, you won't fix it, now you're invading here to America to fuck our government up. How can you fuck up our own government if we're already doing a perfect job at it ourselves? Oh my god! Right? Oh, man. <laughs> This is a fucking joke, man. This, this is absolutely retarded. I, I can't. Let's fucking move on. I'm, I'm done with this topic. Let's, let's move to something that's more worth my time. This is clearly not worth my time. Why in the fucking hell I wasted five minutes of my time reviewing this? I have no fucking idea. Next freaking topic! Please! I don't get money from Wall Street, I can tell you that. Wall Street donations to Clinton campaign. 17.2 million dollars from security investment industry since April of 2015. You motherfucker! The Clintons. 
a family who has never picked a single crop, made one widget, or produced anything of value for society is worth over $200 million! Harry Truman, an honest public servant, cannot become rich in politics. You're damn right! Do you erase Obama's legacy? Simple. It's in the toilet, so it makes perfect sense to flush it, right? There you go. Simple as that. I would like to prove to you that I am not a Jew. I am a fucking Nazi, and I am a socialist Nazi communist Luciferian running for president of the United States of America. If you get my vote, I will properly explain to you socialism exactly as you would want it. The fuck off. Oh. Bernie Sanders is running for president again! Yeah! <laughs> that poor old bastard doesn't know when to quit, does he? I swear to God. Oh. You'd think he would learn from the last time he got fucked! In 2016! Oh, but Hillary Clinton's? Yeah, I rigged the primaries against you. But here, let me buy you a private check with Saudi's dirty money! Oh my god, man. This is so ridiculous. I have just hit the fucking gold mine with these, with these pictures. Look at these pictures! <laughs> I can't even, man. This is so fucking dumb, man. This this guy, how old is this guy? 77? He might as well be older than Methuselah at this point. I mean, Bernie friggin' Sanders, right? Running, once again, for the presidency of the United States of America! Oh, say can you not see? Your fucking idiots are too dumb to think for themselves. Of course they would vote for you because they don't know any better. You fucking retard. <sighs> this is specifically why I created Spot the Liberal, ladies and gentlemen. I created this web show, the first of many that I've created, especially for my Skull Media Enterprises franchise, to show you all that you should fear stupid people in large groups. This is just one of those reasons, another being in and by the way, I'm just noting this verbatim. Not to include the entire Clinton family, Hillary, Bill, Chelsea, Mark, and now George Soros, former Nazi general supervisor to Adolf Hitler! That's not including the entire Democratic Party, half of the Republican Party, but God knows you have to vote straight Republican, because it's the only choice that you have! A vote for a Democrat is not a choice! Ladies and gentlemen, this guy will never know when to quit, and he, like John McCain, will kill himself trying. And he is so desperate to try over and over and over and over and over again. For the love of fuck, stop!
Buddy Sanders, you're killing yourself! Stop! But he doesn't know how, and that's the problem. Uh, Andrew Jackson is bearing a shit-eating grin in his lonely, masturbating grave right now. And I can almost bet you that his corpse is molesting Satan's wife at this very moment. People, if you had any idea what this man was all about, you would have never allowed yourself to vote for this absolute, complete, dementia-suffering, Alzheimer's patient of a human being. Do you understand? This is why America died in 1812. And it will never come back to life unless we get rid of these freaking assholes. I am dead serious, people. I am dead freaking serious. But most of you people will just say, Oh, well, this is not even back true. Ah, this is not true. I'm just fucking dead. I'm just dead. I'm just dead again. Tell me, Clinton. But I'll go back. No. No. Absolutely fucking no. A politician is no longer the answer in this country. It is an actual human being. Someone that's willing to fight for you. If you can't elect someone who's fighting for you, you should move to a Venezuela, an Iran, a Syria, a fucking Afghanistan. Why the fuck are you even allowed to breathe? Because your parents made the mistake of conceiving you. You fucking idiots. I guarantee you these are the same people that voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. I guarantee you. And there were a hell of a lot less than 65 million. In fact, 15 of those million people were either illegal immigrants or dead. Or did not exist at all. Guarantee it. I guarantee it. And that's okay. Because it's all going to come back to you. And you're going to realize the mistake you made. And you're going to drown it. You morons. Moronica for Americans. Or should I say, Moronica for morons! Because only in America can you be a fucking moron! God, I love... I... It's good that I'm getting all this out of my chest now, because why, why else would I want to get off my chest all this information? Oh my god, people. And what about Ilhan Omar, right? The cabin in the woods wannabe who illegally immigrated to this country from this shithole known as Somalia. Let, let's get to her real quick, white. Right? Let's get to her. You're a piece of shit. Speaking of the big jackass and the tiny, tiny house. Ilhan Omar, the absolute terroristic Muslim sisterhood shitbag that she is, and you're finally starting to wake up, Minnesota. After all these years, you are finally waking up. The fuck is wrong with you people? You elected someone who illegally immigrated here from a terroristic-bound Somalia overrun by pirates and immigrant terrorists and invaders who, like all the other countries minus America, have been met with the exact same fate. Death by Rothschild. Death by Rothschild. Death by Rothschild. Death by Rothschild. You fucking idiots. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I need to make something extremely clear to you all so that you people can understand what I am saying. Ladies and gentlemen, the one that you elected is actually an invading illegal immigrant who's sleeping in bed with Louis Farrakhan and one of his thousands upon thousands of illegal immigrant wives, not excluding Ocasio-Cortez, who, by the way, is a member of the United States legally because Puerto Rico is a part of the United States and has been for over a century. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when you elect a Kenyan Muslim terrorist jihadist into the White House in Barack Obama, a serial rapist and pedophilic liar in William Jefferson Bill Clinton, or as I like to call him the $3 bill because he's gay as fuck, a con man sellout named Ulysses S. Grant who sold this country to Jacob Rothschild and Dynasty, as they are now known, in that infamous, god awful, 1871 DC Crap Organic Act, and a supreme living jackass that should have been a centaur, but had to be given the absolute curse of being a human being in Andrew Jackson. And you wonder why we refuse to listen to God. Because we won't learn from history! We will not learn from fucking history! You people in Minnesota elected a terrorist illegal immigrant from Somalia into Congress, knowing that she was a part of ISIS, and Al-Qaeda, and the Taliban, and the Muslim Brotherhood, and Louis Farrakhan's so-called brigade of black Islamic statesmen coming bad shit terrorists. For what? What was it fucking worth? The answer is nada. Zero. Focus. Zilch. Zilch. Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing! And you people deserve everything that you fucking get. The same way everyone in California deserves what they get because they elected a fucking man synonymous with rat shit to be their governor for the last ten fucking years! The same way New York deserves everything bad that it gets for electing a pisswad like Andrew Cuomo or Bill de Blasio. At least Rudy Giuliani was a half-decent human being who tried his best to save New York from what it would not only become, but that ultimately failed. And do you know, ladies and gentlemen, why that failed? Because the history of humanity can be summed up in three words. It repeats itself. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sorry to have to tell you this, and I'm not nearly as happy at telling you this than you are hearing this, but you need to have these fucking truths shoved down your fucking throat and out of your fucking anus because you refuse to listen to people who are actually right for once. An Aristotle, a Tacitus, a Sophocles, a Plato, a John Fitzgerald Kennedy Sr. You refuse to listen to these people. For what? Do I need to show you the entirety of my recital of Washington's 1796 farewell address in its entirety? It's about 30 minutes long. But I insist that you redirect yourself to Jefferson's mistake, my latest out of this moment shockumentary. I have a fifth one that I have finished. I will give you the title of it now, official. 
My next documentary is on the mainstream media, and it is entitled The Politically Correct Police, or rather, The Political Correctness Police Have Killed Television. Because you won't fucking listen to history! It is so frustrating for you people to have to constantly screw yourselves. Ow! Ow! Up the fucking ass without any loot. You do this every single day for 207 years. Are you not tired of it? You have to be tired of it! Guys! Listen to me! Listen to my voice as I am speaking to you! It's like I am reenacting Moses giving the Ten Commandments on the top of a mountain at the Sermon on the Mount when God etched these Ten Commandments in stone through his lightning rods and gave it to him from high above with his mighty large hands, his ancestral, spiritual, ancestral, celestial hands to deliver these Ten Commandments to the people. But what was it all worth if so many thousands of years later it comes to pass that absolutely nothing has changed in how humanity functions or how humanity refuses to function? People, do not tell me that I am shitting on you guys or that I disrespect you. Because I don't do either. I am trying to help you guys. And I respect you enough to give you this help. All you have to do is take it. It is so simple. So ladies and gentlemen. Until we meet again on this spot the liberal pagan moon night. Or whatever religion you want to call it. I. We'll see you in cyberspace. And to all of you, good day, good night, and big balls. Because you're gonna have big balls to suck Henry Clinton! If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like what you see, don't watch my channel. If you don't like it, don't watch. If you like it, do watch. It's that simple. 50-50. Is it just me, or am I... I mean, you tell me. SHUT UP AND LISTEN! Somebody help me, I'm going to die! In any case, though, and I say this from the bottom of my fucking heart, welcome back! <laughs> Welcome one and all to the most underrated rep show in all of YouTube. Welcome to Spot the Libra. As you can see, I got myself a new haircut today. Okay, I have a problem. I have a problem. I have a very huge problem. A massive problem. And it's about this country. It's about America. My country tis of the sweet land of misery of the I sting. Well, I mean, it might as well be, but let me, let me explain something to you, okay? We have the fourth largest economy of 215 nations on this planet. 
only Russia, China, and Saudi Arabia outrank us. But we also have the worst educational system out of 215 nations. Because we won't accept the fact that there are actually 51 states in America. Not 50 like we've been lied to our whole lives. The 51st state in question, of course, is Washington, D.C. So I have a huge, massive problem. Angela Merkel of Germany up an entire continent. She could apologize and close the borders before it's too late. Will she do that? No! Because of course it's too late! Europe is too far gone. Bye-bye, Europe! Bye-bye! We barely knew ye. And we elect people who never had a single solitary care in the world about you and I. We are stupid enough to elect people who have never earned an honest penny or had a job in the entirety of their lives. And you mean to tell me that we are going to allow these people to stay in political office for 40, 50, 60 years? Look at what happened with John McCain! The Republican traitor, who wasn't really a Republican, but more a Democrat in Republicans' clothing. You know what happened to him? He killed himself. Suicide by stupidity was the cause. Because 40 years before he died, when he knew he had a choice to make, he chose very poorly. He chose poorly. And became a politician instead of an ambassador to the military, like his dad and his grandfather were. So to that, I pay my respects to Admiral John McCain III, not the senator of the same name, which, by the way, are the exact same person, by the way. They go one and one. They go with one another. Chuck Schumer has never had a job in his life and has stayed in political office since 1975. When you elect people who have no understanding whatsoever of the labor market in any solitary capacity, this is how you know that we is an American race, as a nation, have completely shit the bed. And in some states, I'm afraid to say, they are outlawing guns. Sharia law is slowly taking over this country. We're not doing a damn thing about it. And it's sad. For a nation who is the fourth wealthiest on earth, we should at least invest some of our money on ammo to protect ourselves from the corrupt government that we allowed to take over our lives. Do we do that? No. No. Because we're too stupid to know the difference between a politician and an actual human being. You know, we could stop school shootings, right? We could find that one single cure-all to stop school shootings. 
You know, all those thousands of unemployed, trained military vets, 28 of which kill themselves every day because the government has outed them. What if we used three of them? in every single school, to arm those three veterans in every school to make sure that our children, when we take them to school, will be in good hands knowing that someone who has been on the battlefield has got their back. No school bully or school shooter in the world would be able to fend themselves off against those guys. Kind of like what happened to Venezuela. You know, you know, America is what Venezuela was 70 years ago when they elected that absolute piece of trash, Castro. I don't know if it's Fidel or Hugo or whoever the hell it was. Basically, when they elected Nicolas Maduro, they gave up all of their guns seven years ago to where now they are being shot dead by Nicolas Maduro and the socialist government that is killing their people off one by one every moment of every day. And yet these people want to come to our nation and invade upon our soil. Bullshit. You people deserve everything that you get. Change it. So, we have people like Chelsea Clinton who have the unfortunate distinction of being born to a rapist and a serial killer and they say that marijuana kills. No, they don't. Marijuana only kills people if they abuse it on a frequent, habitual basis. Marijuana doesn't kill people. Unless the people allow themselves to kill themselves with marijuana. 47 years has the war on drugs gone and it's a lost cause. I'm sorry to say it, it's a lost cause. It was a lost cause when it first came about. It's still a lost cause now. Something that started that's a lost cause should never be started. And Julian Assange is in exile and in constant fear of his life because, like myself, he has the nuts to speak the God's honest truth when no one else will. Julian fucking Assange, Wikileaks, revealed to us many, 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 many documents of Hillary Clinton's, which she still says that she destroyed. Not all of them. Not all of them. Because he knew that the only candidate that was good enough for the presidency of the United States in 2016 was Donald John Trump Sr. You didn't know his son was his namesake, did you? Well, you do now. Congratulations. The point I'm trying to make in all this is very simple. The difference between McDonald's and the Democratic Party is about as clear-cut as can be. At McDonald's, one clown 
runs the whole damn show. In the Democratic Party, a hundred of those clowns run the show, and they can't even run a show! They can't even book a show! They can't even book themselves out of bed in the morning! And yet, you mean to tell me that people like Jane Fonda should be praised for saying things like, I swear that American flag is my doormat. I hate everything about this country. Well, Jane Fonda, we hate you too, and we wish you were dead. Okay, I've got a, I've got a very, 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 very clear story to tell you all. Also, notice my haircut. My hair got cut today. I had somebody I had somebody cut my hair today. Good friend of mine. And no, it's not the same barber that I go to. Different one. Very good friend. Very hard work. So picture this. A woman is raped and impregnated by her rapist. She calls the police, and the police, instead of doing their job and arresting the rapist that impregnated her, they arrest the victim of the rape who was raped and impregnated by the rapist, and they kill her. You think this would be some Islamic shithole country somewhere in the Middle East or in South America or any other nation but America, right? Wrong. This actually happened in Texas. Texas! Texas. And that's in the United States, by the way. So, when you consider everything out, when you, when you filter the bullcrap out, and you filter the truth in, when you take the truth in, science will tell you, just like Jesus said, that you need air, you need water, you need food, and you need light. To survive. That's one thing that science and Jesus Christ have in common, right? Right! <laughs> and you know what? You know what? With a nation that is made up of 330 million people. Actually, it's not 330 million people. It's more like 290 million. Because 40 million of these people were either smuggled here by their parents who illegally forced them to immigrate here, or they illegally invaded this American soil themselves. We're supposed to be the melting pot, right? Well, if people started coming in through a port of entry for once, maybe we would be a melting pot. But what we are now, we're just melting. We're not a melting pot anymore. Now we're just melting. We're melting into complete anonymity. So, 290 million natural-born citizens or legal immigrants of America. Less than a million of those 290 million are watching CNN. Because they are less relevant than HGTV, the Food Channel, 
Boomerang, Disney Channel, and Public Access. And yet there are still a million people who still fall for this shit. UNACCEPTABLE! And then you people want to believe that Bernie Sanders is the good guy! He's not a good guy. He's right up there with Satan's right hand man. Jacob fucking Rothschild. And you mean to, you mean to tell me that there is one antichrist in this world? No, there's not. There's more like 300 of them! And they are all within a committee of 300 whose main mission is to destroy the entirety of the human race, meaning us and inevitably themselves. It gets better. So many people in this nation who fall for the Jacksonian deceit are hypocrites. They are hypocrites. They bash capitalism on their iPhones while drinking their Starbucks. And if that weren't bad enough, you have a Democratic presidential candidate from the absolute sex slave industry shithole that is California named Eric Swalwell. I can't believe I'm going to mention him. Who has recently called to repeal the Second Amendment, to take our guns away from us, so that we can become the next Venezuela. Sorry to say this to all you people, but we are Venezuela now. Except... We're much better than Venezuela could ever be. We are what Venezuela will never be, a republic. And you mean to tell me that Eric Swalwell would be a decent president? No, he won't. Hillary Clinton, you thought she was your president. Guess what? She's not any of our presidents. She's not even the president of make-believe world. So, that brings me now to another question. And that question is, what is collusion? Three years. Three years. They waste hundreds of millions of dollars of your money that you work for 20 hours a day, seven days a week, in many cases, on a Comey con job that many people still mistake to this day as the Mueller probe, which it's not. It's the Comey con job! That piece of shit was Attorney General once. The head of the FBI. James fucking Comey. The reason why I do spot the liberal is simple. I am passionate about the patriotism of this nation. I try to warn you people about the fucking Bullshit that you're still, after 207 years, allowing to happen because you're bystanders. You won't, you won't do anything about it. You're bystanders. You're too scared to do anything about it. Why don't you just take a risk? Take a risk! Collusion, and I'm reading this from my smartphone verbatim, is when an attorney is when an attorney general James Comey former head of the FBI meets secretly with the spouse of a person under investigation namely Donald Trump's wife Melania 
Collusion is when media personnel provides questions in advance to benefit the Democrats over the Republicans in a debate. Do you remember who was guilty of that? The head of the DNC at that time, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. No relation to a Nazi general named Edwin Scholz because he didn't have that T in his last name. I feel sorry for the guy who created Peanuts. Collusion is when the Democratic Nazi committee conspires with one candidate, Hillary Clinton, in a primary to block the others in that primary, namely Bernie Sanders, you know, Faith Spotted Eagle, you know, that Native American that ran for president in 2016? Yeah, that person. That Faith Spotted Eagle. That Native American. There are only four million of them left in this nation! All because of what Andrew Jackson did during his presidency. Trail of Tears? That didn't work! Because even in death, he is still responsible for more deaths than almost any other human being in history. During his presidency and since his death, he has been responsible for 100 million Native Americans dying. Collusion is when government officials, a.k.a. the mainstream media, leak classified information to the politically correct police. They are not the mainstream, they are the politically correct police. Sucking that rough sound, Payne! That's all they do. Collusion is when an FBI director hands out immunity to persons involved in a criminal investigation and permits them to destroy evidence and doesn't play key suspects and witnesses other oath nor records their responses in an interview or disposition. Or should I say deposition, because that's clearly the last word here on my small... You can read it, you say, look, look. You cannot tell me that's not collusion. You know... Most people born after 2000 will never understand how good they have it. People that were born between 82 and 2000, like myself, will never quite understand how good we have it. Because, unfortunately, many of us are too stuck on our smartphones to give a damn. Except when people like me are told to get off our smartphones and work, we work. We get off our smartphones, we get up off of our asses, and we work. And I work from home. So this guy told his teenage niece to go get her, to go get him a newspaper. She laughed at him and said, Oh, uncle, you are so old. Just use my phone. So he did. He slammed her phone against the wall to kill a spider. That is justice. Respect your elders. Bottom line, respect your elders. It gets, it gets even better somehow. Somehow it gets better. Planned Parenthood consists of 
people from Hamas and ISIS and Al Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood and someone like Kermit the Frog will ask them so you stopped having sex because you can't get an abortion think about that for a minute take your time terrible Kermit the Frog person Jim Henson is probably vomiting in his grave right now Ugh. so here's the thing before you open your mouth, think. And I'm not talking about the song composed by Merv Griffin that serves as the theme song to the long-running Corso Jeopardy, which was first hosted by Art Fleming in the 1960s and 70s, and then brought back in 1984 with Alice Trebek as host, and it's been running for 35 years. I'm talking about, think about whether or not it's truthful, helpful, inspiring, necessary, or kind. T-H-I-N-K. Think. Think before you speak. These are the people that you elect to Congress, everybody. You could stop electing these people and put them in their rightful places in prison where they belong! But you don't want to do that. Your funeral, not mine. Because to a mind that is still, the entire universe surrenders. You have to have a still mind. To overcome any situation, no matter what happens. And yet there are too many feminists out there, the, the Ann Coulters, the Megan Kellys of the world, the Jane Fondas, the Barbara Walters of the world that want to say that a baby is a female body. No, it's not. A baby is not a female body part! A baby is your child! Which none of you should have had, by the way! All you feminists out there! Should have never allowed your kids to be born. This is why they're as dumb and inbred as they are now. Because you allowed yourselves to have a Democrat screw you in bed one night Without a con. Unprotected. This is still the reason why we've had the Mari show now for the last 20 years. So keep that in mind. The future citizen of the world deserves rights and is not feminists out there. Your right to pick and choose. You don't get to pick and choose in this situation. The future citizen of a world, which they will inherit, deserves rights and is not your own female organ to pick and choose. Because I like what you've been saying. Well, it's my body, it's my right. It's not my it is your baby. And it's not just your body, it's the baby's body too. Bear that shit in mind. And the resemblances of those two people compared to those two Muppets that you see right here is astoundingly accurate so if you ever wanted a lesson on what evil really is look no further than the Democratic Nazi Party.
Look no further than that, people. And if you look any further than that, you'll end up in the gates of hell and you won't be back anytime soon. I guarantee it. So, I thank you for spending about 32 minutes of your time watching this shit. And I'm actually going to pay homage to Metro Goldwyn Mayer, who will be celebrating its 100th anniversary officially as Metro Goldwyn Mayer in 2024. Have a good day, sleep tight tonight, and God bless. This episode of has been brought to you by God. Okay, ladies and germs, here's your reminder. If you think the WWE is the only game in town, then... This is not for politically correct audiences or for the weak of mind. You know what you're getting yourselves into. If you don't, fuck off the PewDiePie. That's it. <laughs>
everybody should have been paying close attention and scrutiny to this. Once again, they sweep it under the rug. And yet, stupid, retarded, mongoloid idiots still think elite pedophilia rings are just a conspiracy theory. Really? Are they a conspiracy theory now? No, they're not. This stuff actually happens! This is the real deal! Shit like that happens every day and hardly anybody pays attention inexcusable why do people not pay attention to this why in the hell don't more people expose these faggy Hollywood-worshipping, satanic, reptilian, horny bastards for what they are. Because I'm afraid of my life, the government's gonna- No! Don't be afraid of your life! Don't be afraid to die! Expose them! Like I do every day! You'll sleep better at night knowing that you're doing the right thing. Anyway, let us continue now to, oh, by the way, before we go to the next particular topic in question, there's a video on my YouTube channel that covers this in full detail, Hollywood shithole land of pedophiles. It's a third shockumentary on my YouTube channel, right before Jefferson's mistake and chronology. Go check that out. I will link you in the description. Next topic. Faggot. Faggot. Pathetic faggot! <laughs> so, I posted a YouTube video at or around four years ago in 2015. I ranted for close to seven minutes, give or take. On probably one of the most offensive shows I've ever seen in my life. That show is, of course, Clarence. And I absolutely roasted that show and its creator, Skylar Page, over an open fire. And I burnt that bitch to a crisp. You're damn right I did. Now, here's where this really gets interesting. Here's where this really gets interesting. All right? I suggest that Clarence get cancelled because of the fact that its creator knew nothing about people with developmental disabilities and that this show of his deliberately makes fun of the developmentally disabled. As it turns out, yours truly, Kevin the Skull Anderson, predicted the cancellation of that Cartoon Network show, which was God awful, by the way. Nearly three years in advance. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that video of mine, which does not have but I would say 100 views, only has 100 views, maybe, maybe 100, probably not even that much, but I guarantee you, one of the views was. Someone at Cartoon Network listening to this video. And I was living in a group home at the time. People that lived with me, that were residents there, that were tenants there, were developmentally disabled. In whatever way mentally possible. Guarantee you, one of the people at Cartoon Network saw this video and they immediately jumped at the chance to question Skylar Page about this. So they fired him from Cartoon Network Studios because he created a cartoon so visibly, unanimously offensive 
that it literally makes fun of developmentally challenged people. And sure enough, some guy, not some guy with the last name Rothwell, took over the production of the show, which lasted for two more seasons. And it finally got canceled in late June of 2018. So, needless to say, that one person from Cartoon Network who saw my video from August of 2015, I would say, I guarantee you that one person did the right thing in questioning Skylar Page. Because let's let's face it, this guy doesn't know what a group home is. He doesn't know what people in a group home setting are. The guy's an idiot. He's a freaking idiot. And and hell, just for shits and giggles. Just for shits and giggles, I'm going to play for you now the video of mine in question. And I'll let you judge for yourself. If there really was at least one person from Cartoon Network Studios who saw this video themselves, I'll let you take a listen. I have a stupid question for all of you, and I just want all of you to be honest with me. Have you ever seen the show Clarence on Cartoon Network? Have you ever seen that show, huh? Well, if you've seen the show, you're probably... You're probably not going to like what I say about it. Now, I just got done asking one of my group home administrators about this show, and she told me that this show makes fun of mentally impaired people. What the fuck? This, this guy named Skylar Page actually created this show not knowing that it would make fun of mentally impaired people what the fuck I'm, I'm sorry I'm just I'm just blown away by this I just don't understand it it just blows my mind because and I thought South Park was offensive this show would put South Park to shame easily and it's only been on the air for what a year it, it actually the pilot for that show premiered in September of 2013 and it was nominated for a Creative Arts Emmy Award! Are people really that stupid? What the fuck? <sighs> okay. Let me just... Let me give you a brief overview of what the animated series on Cartoon Network Clarence is all about. Apparently the show revolves around a mentally retarded kid named Clarence who is fairly overweight and is not quite right. His two friends Jeff and Sumo and a few of his other friends they try to help him stay out of trouble because Apparently, he can't stop getting into trouble because he's not quite right in the head. And I talked to my group, one of my group home administrators about this, and she told me that the first time she saw this show, she was outraged. She was outraged, discouraged, and insulted. She recommended that her grandkids not watch it, because it's so offensive. The creator of the show, Skylar Page, actually voiced the eponymous character during the season one. And for some reason, the creator of that show was fired from Cartoon Network because, well, just because. I can't really tell you why, because I might end up jumping to a conclusion that nobody could agree with, obviously. And then, and then, and then look at this, look at this. Let me, let me, let me see here. 
there's this, you know this guy, Clarence Wendell, right? Right? He, he's not like us. He was never like us. He lived, uh, people, people like Clarence Wendell live in their own freaking world. But Skylar Page, the creator of the show, wants to offend the mentally impaired masses and just make fun of retarded people. I don't understand that. Where's the... I mean, just listening to a story like that makes me not want to watch Cartoon Network ever again. I guarantee you, if anybody sees this video, they're going to agree with me. And you know why? Because they know the truth because they heard it from me. And quite frankly, Skylar Page, I know you're watching out there, but Skylar, have you ever been in a fucking group home? I've lived in a group home for three years. I have to live with people like Clarence Wendell every single day. You don't know what the fuck I've been through. So fuck. Just to clarify a few things, I erroneously stated that my video had less than 100 views. Turns out, it now has more than 600. So, I take full ownership of the miscalculation. My bad. But the bottom line is, when you're creating an animated series, the last thing you would ever want to do is piss off a bunch of people in the mental retardation community. Because you're going to get your ass grilled on a fucking barbecue so quickly. I can't believe I'm having to say this, but I was writing everything that I stated in that video. Minus the view count. I'll take ownership for the view count. But do seriously watch that video in its entirety. I encourage it. Let's move on to another topic now. Let's see what we can go with here. Because we're going to talk about some stuff. In the DC Shiloh. <laughs> And so I ask you now, do you support Donald John Trump Sr.'s recent decision? I'm going to quote to you what he said. By the way, by the way, if you were asking me that question instead of me asking you, I'd totally approve of it. I'd totally support it without question. He says, and I quote, Today I'm proud to announce... I will soon be signing an executive order requiring colleges and universities to support free speech if they want federal research dollars. I personally think that is a fantastic idea, but it's not about me. It's about you and what you think. Do you support this decision? Now, now, you have to take into consideration. You have to take into consideration. You were screwed over by your boy, Barack Obama, for eight years. I know it, because I fell into his trap when I voted in 2012. I was dumb. I was naive. I didn't know shit. I know a lot of shit now. That's why I'm asking you this. But when you answer this question, you have to understand that freedom of speech, despite being a lie, is what sets the United States apart from every other nation. No other nation on the planet 
has freedom of speech besides the United States of America. I want you to let that sink in right now. Let it sink in. Go ahead. Let it sink in. Because that man, that man you see right here, I don't give a damn what you say or what you think of the man. What he has done throughout his presidency cements him in all likelihood as the single greatest American president this country has ever had since Abraham Lincoln. I do genuinely believe that. I am dead serious on that, and I am right to speculate that. So now I ask you once again, do you support this decision? If your answer is no, then clearly you must be a freaking jackass. But I don't hold it against you. You are holding it against yourself. But you cannot do that anymore. Instead, what you can do is say straight up, I respect your opinion, but I disagree. That's it. That's all you have to do. That one sentence, that's all you have to tell me. Okay. Moving on now. Now this is some really disturbing shit here. Storm Durham was fired from her Roanoke City social worker job for having a concealed carry permit. Not the gun, the permit. Just the permit. She was escorted by three city police officers because, in their words, she was a safety risk to the building. What the fuck does a permit warrant? To be a safety risk. Nothing. Bullshit. Because with injustice and bullshit like that, you're damn right I'm going to share this story. Ladies and gentlemen, Storm Durham was robbed of her job for being on the right side of history. She did not have a gun on her. She only had a permit that said that at any time at all, she could buy one. So, people like myself are not allowed to own a gun or a permit because we are quote-unquote mentally ill. Everybody in the world is mentally ill. Every single human being has a mental or physical or some other kind of illness. You mean to tell me that because she had a fucking permit, that you're just going to fire her because she's a safety risk to the building? Bullshit. Bullshit. That is the biggest bunch of crap I've heard. God almighty. I'm going to tell you this now. When things get so bad in a nation that is supposed to be governed by a constitution that serves one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The freest nation in the world and the only one on the planet that has freedom of speech. You mean to tell me that someone could have a permit and be fired and escorted out of the building because 
Them having a permit is a safety risk? Yet an illegal immigrant has an Uzi gun and kills 50 people in a gay nightclub, and that person gets off scot-free. America's dead, people. I've been saying it for years. I've been saying it, hell, I've been saying it for three years. For three years! You listen to me, I tell you what it needs to be, and I tell you what it is and what it should be. You people, take my advice seriously, and if you don't agree with what I say, say nothing more and nothing less than the words, I disagree, and shut your damn mouth. The fact that a person is legally permitted to own a gun, but they only carry the permit and not a gun, and the damn employers fire her just for having a damn permit, is completely inexcusable. This is why I will never get another public sector job. I work at home. I work at home. YouTube and cleaning up houses and cleaning up yards and doing anything I can to help people around my community out and helping my neighbors out and helping my mentors out and helping other people out and taking care of animals and stuff is my job. Like it or not, that's the truth. You can't accept it? Fuck off to Venezuela or Saudi Arabia. Maybe they'll treat you better. Let's see what we got going next. This episode of <laughs> has been brought to you by God.